Hello, everybody. I missed you all. Hopefully, your 4th of July is going all right. I'm, I'm, mine's not going too bad, though there is a couple little complications. So I am moving right now. So the... <laughs> So this little like, you know, background deal I, I and the lighting, I'm not really sure what's going on. So bear with me, but I'm not too much of a firework kind of a person. So I'm probably going to do something a little bit more constructive, like drinking in the corner. But anyway, interesting story. And I was just sitting around trying to figure out what to say. And I was just hanging out with my buddy here. This is a uh, Will Farrow. And, uh, I was just reading around about what's going on in the world, and there's an interesting story that I don't think a lot of people know. I mean, maybe. Maybe a lot of people know, and I just don't know. I don't know. Comment in the comment section below if you've heard of this. But anyway, there's a story that I had gotten from The Hill, usdakotaward.org, and The Nation. It's pretty grim. It's pretty grim. Pretty much it goes like this. December 26, 1862, Abraham Lincoln sentenced 38 Dakota Native Americans to death by hanging. So pretty much what happened was there was either a war or an uprising between the Dakota tribe and the United States. And I say it's either one or the other, the war or the uprising. It's kind of dependent on your perspective, right? Like, for example, with the Palestinians, is it like a, an uprising or is it a war? It depends on the level of occupation. That's kind of debatable. But anyway, you get my point, right? There was a fight. Okay. After the fight, there were 700 white people dead, which 70 were troops, 50 were unarmed civilians, and the rest were just your average civilians. With the Dakota tribe, 75 to 100 is predicted, which the numbers are probably off. It's probably like hundreds because you're usually off by, I believe it's like a factor of four, generally speaking, to try to make themselves look better, you know? Like, for example, like we didn't kill that many people. But from the looks of it, 75 to 100 roughly Dakota soldiers were killed and an untold number of civilian deaths. We really don't know how many civilians died from this. You can take a guess, but there, I mean, like, it, it's literally the 1800s like they're not going to keep track of that stuff so anyway after all this death came the end of the war and that's when the 38 native americans were sentenced to die and what is really disturbing about this as well was that literally a fourth of the surrendered native americans died the following year now it is debatable as in terms of like how exactly they died but my guess based off of the historical context of the situation probably based on the fact that they're forcibly removed from a section of minnesota chances are it was probably famine you know disease and like murders pretty much so anyway thought you guys would appreciate this but also how do you guys feel about this this is a very it's a jacked up story but also at the same time as we're having conversations about say like mount rushmore with all the different leaders on there like what do you guys think we should do about this or if anything, because I actually did a poll on Twitter. Now, granted, this is the people who decided to engage in the poll. It's not representative of the whole U S population, but I think it was 35. Yeah. 35% roughly said that they would rather blow up Mount Rushmore as opposed to keep it, which granted, I don't think we're going to be blowing up Mount Rushmore anytime soon, but it's, it's the sentiment that is important. So what are we going to do about this? Anyway, let me know. Thank you. Oh, and one more thing. Remember, 4th of July, do not drink and light fireworks at the same time. So I've heard. I, of course, never did this myself. But anyway, have a good night. Be safe or don't. Regardless, get out alive and uh, don't pollute the environment. Thank you.